<laughs> there we go. So, Scott, so I'll, over to you, mate. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I am going to uh, tie um, two flies for you today, and we're going to take a break from the big, long streamers. I was showing um, Derek one I tied today. This is uh, a streamer called the 10 Feather Smelt. And there's actually 10 feathers stacked on top of each other on that fly. Uh, it's a bugger to tie, but it's a great one that catches uh, a lot of fish. That, but I figured I'd switch gears and, and do a couple small flies um, that are really good trout flies. You, you would um, be able to have no problem uh, tying this and, uh, and more importantly, uh, catching fish with it. The materials on this one are very simple. Um, we're gonna start, we're gonna use a small Sprite streamer hook. And then it really only has two materials. It has a wood duck uh, wing and it has a uh, collar that is um, olive hen. And it's really, really a, this is a really good fly. And a lot of uh, people, they can, they'll tie it. The wood duck will remain. And they'll tie it several different ways. Uh, sometimes they use a very light dun collar. Sometimes they use a, uh, they'll take a bronze mallard feather and they'll actually slice down one side of the stem because the bronze mallard stems are thick and they'll slice down the part of the stem and remove half of the feathers and they'll use the, the bronze mallard for the collar and it gives it a unique color and it, it, it's really good and very durable. Um, there are some people that put orange hen on the front of this. Uh, I've found that that, I mean, not, it's not as, as successful to catch fish, but anyways, this is what, this one is uh, what we're gonna tie to start with. And we're gonna use a uh, Sprite S1800 uh, 4X hook. These are, uh, perfect size for these and the good part about um these hooks if you've if you've talked to any of of us who use them you'll find that these are these are made with um a really strong steel and because they're made with that really strong steel mm -hmm. they'll actually bend before they break there are a couple hooks that we've been finding lately that are coming in and that when they get nicked on the bottom you hit a rock or something that the uh the tip will, uh, point will break right off so um just so you know um the sprite hooks don't seem to do that as much uh i haven't had any and i and uh mark who uh hammett who does um sprite and and partridge and all sorts of other stuff he um, he has said that these these will bend before they will break, and I can attest to that. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a little olive um, Danville thread, and I take it back not even halfway. I always start back about uh, one eye length back off the um, eye with my thread, and then I just take this back. Um, uh, it's not even at a halfway point. It's a little bit shy of the halfway point, and you'll see why. Uh, basically, what we're trying to do is we're going to take this uh, wood duck here. This is uh, lemon wood duck, and um, we're actually going to use the tip area. So I'm just going to get rid of the, the crap on, uh, on the end, the fluff and everything. And I'm, what I'm looking for when I get, when I pull one of these out, is I want one that's pretty even going all the way across. It doesn't have to be exact, but what I don't want is just to have one side that's uh, higher than the other. Kind of like if you were looking at a piece of mallard, right? See how that mallard is kind of got that angle because it grew on one side of the body. Um, so I'm gonna try to get this. So it's it's a nice barred one and, I, and the barring is important. And I kind of look at the stem if the stem is really too thick all the way up, I'm probably not gonna um, take that. But with this one being, you can barely see the stem in the middle, I'm gonna take it. 
And then I, I do this little thing where I take a pair of good old English hackle pliers and I try to just grab the very tip. And all I do is I try to draw gently the feathers back. So what I'm looking to get is something that looks like this. If you can see that, it's a real thin, there's probably about uh, eight fibers, four on each side. And that's what I'm, how, that's where I'm gonna tie it in, right at that junction and hopefully it won't break. If it does, well, we'll just, we'll just fix it and move on. They do break every once in a while. And I'm gonna tie it in, I'm gonna get like maybe four moderate wraps on it. And I'm gonna go halfway back towards that eye, up towards that eye. And then I'm gonna just draw those feathers back the, where I tied it in and kind of double over them. Just a few wraps. And then I'm gonna bring it back up. So I'm just up where I started my thread. I still have bare, I still have bare, um, a shank that's not covered. Now here's where the trick is. Um, this, we're gonna wrap this kind of like you would palmer over the, um, around the hook. And the wood duck is neat because it's really strong. So if you are using mallard here, you'd probably break it. And, and I'm gonna say this is really strong and I'll break it when I start. But um, it's one of these things where if you're careful and you bring your, your your two fingers together, your uh, middle finger and your thumb on your left hand and bring and just pinch the feathers like this and then draw the feathers slightly through, you'll get them to orientate a little bit towards the rear. And that's all I'm looking for, just a little bit. And then I take a wrap around and you could use hackle pliers with this, but I really, I don't, because I've got a lot of stem here to work with. And I draw them back, I get, I pretty much wanna go around two times, right where I tied it in. And once I've got it around two times, then I'm, I'm in good shape. Now you can see all those fibers that I've wrapped are, are sticking up in all sorts of different directions. And I'm gonna get these to settle down a little bit and I start going up the shank and wrap up the shank. And as I go up the shank, what I'm actually doing now is I'm turning the, the feather so the stem, the shiny is facing me. And I'm getting this wrap. The stem is almost flat as it's going on. And what as it's doing that, the feathers that are, are being wrapped around first kind of collar underneath the ones that are going on top. And I bring this right up, kind of open spirals. That's probably about the fifth one. And once I get up to where my thread is, I'm just gonna tie it off. Get a few wraps, get in there, snip it. and then just take a few wraps back over it. And all I'm gonna do is just get it, as it was wrapped around, it kind of went around the hook and I'm gonna train them all back. And if I wet them, it's gonna show you that profile. Now, when the originator of this fly tied this fly, he didn't do it with the olive. He, he tied it and he did some um, different color collars. He, he liked the dun collar. He would finish tying the fly with a collar, put his head cement on, and he would make all his flies. And then he would go upstairs with a, a hot water, hot uh, boiling water with forceps. And he would run the hot water over every one of the flies and all those feathers would train themselves right back so they would look the way you would want them to. And then I'm going to get a piece of this uh, olive hen. And this is uh, a hen from Ewing. 
and uh, Derek, does Bob Bob Swan still have any more of that? Um, I bet he does. He may even have this color. He, he's, he's away on holiday at the moment. Well, he, his phone will be ringing if people are looking for it. <laughs> so I'll do the same with this. I'm going to just take this, pull a little piece back. The hen is not as strong. So you can see I got a little piece there. I'm just going to trim it. So I have a small tri triangle to tie it in. Tie it in shiny side forward towards me. Let's get a couple loose wraps and then crank it down. And now I'm covering that uh, front of the shank. The reason I left that bare is I just want, I don't want a really big head if I, if I don't have to get one. So by doing that, I'm going to, um, I'm going to have less thread up front. And it's the same thing, just a nice little collar. Get a couple wraps. Once you got one wrap on, you're usually in pretty good shape and you shouldn't have any that's going to break on you. And just take this, draw it back. And I've done, I've done like four wraps here because I wanna get this to have, sometimes you get a hand that doesn't have a, as big a barb count as um, you would like. This one is got a kind of what I would say moderate barb, barb count. So I'm gonna take a couple extra wraps with the, um, with the hand around. And then I'm gonna start at the eye and work back. And I got a nice little profile there. It's easy, easy peasy to tie. And then uh, I move my uh, whip finisher. Oh, there it is. And uh, I show you a little uh, what I do with the to seal the head is just put a little on the thread. And then that helps it get right into the fibers. And then I can just take a little bit more. And this is, when I do this, this is really thin down uh, varnish, real thin, like almost 50-50. And all I'm looking for is it to get get into the the thread. I'm not really concerned with a big shiny head here. All I want is that, that to penetrate in and really lock those uh, lock those uh, lock those uh, thread wraps so they're not going to come undone. Because this is a fly that we use when we fish it over here. We fish this with uh, either full sink fly line or sink tip. And um, it's this is like really in the fall, this is a really hot pattern. And if you look at this, I can show you on, while well, that one's dry and I can show you on this one. I have that green uh, material clip there. I have that right on the um, right, by the uh, barb of the hook. So you can see there's there's almost um, a little more than one, one uh, bar, uh, shank length on this. And you, you look at this and say, oh my goodness, they're gonna false hit this. They're gonna hit the tail and they're not gonna take the whole fly. Wrong, uh, they, they inhale this thing. And um, we, we crush the barbs on all these hooks when we fish because we want to release uh, the, the trout that we take. But this would take uh, brown trout, brook, brook trout, 
and uh, Rainbow. I bet it would work for Grayling over there with you guys. Um, but it's a really, really good pattern. And again, if you want to have multiple ones, you can have the um, bronze mallard. You can have the uh, uh, dun colored uh, uh, collar. You could, you know, experiment. I've seen guys use a red collar, a claret collar. Another, well, I'll show you another one. This, uh, it, this color right here, this kind of burnt orange one uh, is not a bad one. I don't like to use the bright orange, but the burnt orange sometimes is one that works in uh, kind of almost like a copper color. It works uh, better in the, in the fall. But that's uh, the heron fly. It's really a simple fly to tie. There's, there's not a lot of materials to it. Um, you just got to get a, a really good uh, load of wood duck feathers so that you can um, that you can use them because you know you'll get uh, you'll get a good day fishing you, you know unless you lose the fly that that's a durable fly it's going to hold up real well but the key to that is when you wrap that wood duck around you put that first wrap all the way around it and then come around again towards you that makes uh, gives you confidence that the stem is not going to break there. And then as you go up, you're kind of spiraling like a barber pole. You're not, it's not touching stem wraps. Um, it's got a little space in between them. And the space allows the feathers to, to not be uh, leveraged against each other and start to stick out. And it also uh, allows you to twist it so the stem the shiny side, that stem you're looking at. And so the uh, fibers from the side that is going down first, those feathers are not really getting leveraged too hard against that stem. And then the ones that are, are sitting on top, they just kind of curl over and as they go around, they're gonna really give you that nice look and that nice taper to it. So it, it's a really good fly. Um, so the next one, they're, they're, these are not, they don't take a long time to tie. Um, and if you look at this one, this is called the teal strip. And it, if you first look at this, it's got a lot of the same characteristics that the olive um, collared heron does, except it is very different. And I'll show you why. Um, with this one, I'm gonna use a slightly bigger hook. I'm gonna use the size six. And this is a, uh, a 4X long. This one's uh, uh, a uh, really nice Sprite one. It's a 1X heavy, so it, it's, it's got some um, strength to it. And um, the, the, the nice part about uh, this hook is there's a, a little bit more materials and it's got a body with it. So uh, it'll give you that same, it's almost gives you the same size when it when you're all done <clears throat> they're matched up eye to eye there it gives you almost the same size but with a much bigger hook all right so this one starts i want to start back a little bit more than uh one and a half eye lengths back to get this in here okay and same thread olive and we'll work that olive thread all the way back and i'm trying to cover the shank so when i get down to the point i get rid of the the tag, and then I just go back. And with these sprite hooks, if you line it up right where the barb starts, that's just about the end of the shank. Now, what I'm gonna use for the body is wool. And you all, I'm, I'm pretty sure will be uh, um, familiar with different companies with a, with a piece of wool. You, you go and you buy it and it's $3 or whatever it, it costs over, 
over in the UK, but you get a, you know, maybe five yards, three yards, and it's, um, it's expensive. You go to a yarn shop and you can find the same stuff um, and try to get it. It's not synthetic. Try to get it with wool and you're, you can, you have a lifetime supply if you buy one roll of the, of the stuff. This is um, got two, uh, two pieces in it wound. A lot of wool comes in four. And if it does come in four, then I'm gonna split it down the middle. So I go two and two. It's really, really important that you do it that way. Um, it just, uh, it'll, uh, if you have it too big, it, it overpowers this fly. So I want a kind of thin body. Now you can do this two ways. The conventional way, if I was teaching a class, would be bring your thread back up, open spirals to where you started it, take your wool and run your thread over the top of it all the way back. And the reason you would do that and not start it and tie it in in the back is you won't get a big knot in the back. This will be more tapered. But if you've ever seen me do floss or or um, tinsel with my big streamers, the way I do it is different. I take the tag end, point it towards the back. I reach around my thread with both fingers and I cradle my thread with that material. And then I press it together and put it in my left hand. I grab my bobbin with my right hand and I rotate the, my fingers to the opposite side. And then I just bring it up and I pull my bobbin towards me. And I pin that material right to the far side of the shank. And then I can just work my way up. And what I wanna do is get this waist underneath the shank. And I don't need to have uh, touching wraps. I can have open spiral, but I wanna keep bringing it up so that waist is on the bottom. So I adjust it because the thread tension wants it to move. You can get, if you tie a lot of uh, material like this, you can actually get yourself trained so that you can get like maybe three or four wraps before you have to reach in there and adjust it. And basically what you're doing is when you come around and your, your bobbin is up in this position up here, you give it the tension right there and it sucks it straight up uh, as opposed to keeping the, the tension even. It's a little, it takes a little bit of time to get used to and practice, but once you get it, you're good to go. All right. So I get it all wrapped in and now I'm gonna start to wrap it up the hook. And one of the things with this is if you keep bringing your fingers up the wool with a lot of tension on it, you'll actually start to pull some of the fibers. You'll be, you, what you're doing, it's almost like combing the fibers straight and taking the twist out. And you'll start to pull some of the fibers out of the material and it'll get thinner and thinner. So basically it's just hand it with a touching wrap. Just hand it back and forth. It's like, I'm very, very, very slightly allowing this to, to kind of go through my fingers. And it, it gets a little bushy, but bushy is good. And it, it even can give you a little bit of a segmented body. And it, I don't know if you can see it on your side, but if you can, now you can see right about where my finger is, there's a little bit of bump. Well, that little bump was some extra material that was sewn into this. And so uh, you got to live with it. Uh, it's in the, in the end, it's up to the fish. So if they don't like that bump, well, too bad. And I always cut enough of this stuff. So I, I can do two or three flies. Now, some tires will get out the old uh, Velcro and they'll pick at this and pull some of the fibers out to make it bushy. I don't really do that. 
because after you catch the first fish, there's so much slime on this thing that it isn't going to really make a big difference. So I don't really worry about that. Um, and then all I'm going to do, I always do this with when I do body materials is I'm just going to do a two turn whip finish for security purposes. Now, here's where it becomes the teal strip. So it, you look at it and you think it, it's got um, one wing, but it really has multiple wings. First is teal. And teal, I don't, do you guys get teal over there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you probably get more than we do. I, I, it's really hard to get teal here. And, um, you know, they, they just don't get as much, um, the, the hunters don't see them as much. So what I'm looking for with this teal is again, that profile. I don't really want one side overloaded, all right? Again, I'll pull this mallard up. It's overloaded on one side because this grew on one side of the bird. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the wood duck. I'm just gonna pull a little bit off the bottom. And here's the trick with this. This is the wing. And this is gonna be a flat wing. It's gonna sit right on top. And what I'm gonna want with this is I want the tips to end up just slightly, maybe one bodkin width beyond the hook bend. That's all. So you can do this several different ways. A lot of people will tie it in flat and draw it forward. And as they, if they draw it forward more than like maybe three or four fibers, then what happens is everything sticks out because again, it's putting so much tension on the front and you're capturing so many behind your thread that it's going to, um, it's not going to do as, as uh, go in smoothly and keep those feathers trained back. So what I do is I just put it on top. I put it to where I basically want the tips. And then I reach in with my bodkin and I give it a little tick there to pull it up, the fibers out. And I'm close. I'm getting close to what I want. Then I'm gonna take this material in my fingers and I'm gonna roll it back and forth. And for most fly tires, they're going, what are you doing? But now look at what it's done. It's trained that you got a nice curve. It's pulled all those fibers together. I lay that wing right on top and I just take one wrap. Now I always put the, the thread and the wing on top of the very last wrap of the body. If you do that, you don't get the wing to kick up. The next wing we put on, not, not a problem because the stem is gonna keep it from jacking it up. That's also a reason why you only use the two um, pieces of wool because if you use four, it's still gonna try to kick that wing up on you and you don't want that. So then all I do is I got one wrap on this. I just adjust it to where I want it. And I take a few wraps forward. And then I look, and if you look at this, I, that wing actually sticks out a little more than I want it to. So I'm gonna try, I usually only have three wraps on it while I do this. I'm gonna take my fingers and pinch just lightly to hold it in place. Then I'm gonna take the stem and draw it up at an angle, like a 45 degree and forward. And once I do that just slightly, you can see it didn't torque any of those uh, fibers where I've tied it in. And if you pull it up at an angle and forward, it's not gonna draw the thread, all the thread forward and roll it off where you tied it in. So it really, that's, that's a perfect wing. That's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna wrap forward a couple wraps. 
and trim it off. And at this point, if you wanted to, you could just give it a little touch of varnish, just a touch, I will. Just to wet the thread. That's it, doesn't need any more. And then, the net, then it's gonna have another wing. It has an olive mallard wing. And that's the one I want, not the one I showed you before. I kind of like this wing. I don't know how well you can see that, but those, there's a lot of barring in that wing. So this in combination with that teal gives it really good coloring. And so I'm gonna do the same thing that I did Gonna take some fibers off each side and then get it to where I want. Now, the first thing you'll notice when you start playing with this mallard is that the stems are much thicker than the teal. And the heavy stems if they're too thick, they'll make this fly not work as well. Now, the trick with this is I want this wing to be longer than the teal, just a hair. And that'll do it. And I do the same thing. I take it. The salmon fly tires would all start to have chest pain if they saw me rolling my fingers on feathers. And I'm tying it in just a little bit forward of that piece of where I tied the, the teal in. And if you look, you can see it's a little bit longer. Can you see that? Try to separate them so you can see it. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna lift it up and draw it up and forward, just like maybe two fibers. And that's perfect. It's laying, the tips are actually probably just, um, if you took your bodkin, they're just the width of your bodkin. I know it sounds like um, being real thick, <laughs> real picky, but it makes this fly really work well if you tie it that way. Reach in, snip it off. Now, it's gonna get a collar and it's gonna be a hen collar. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just wrap all the way up to behind the eye and then all the way back and what, it, what I've done is I've, I've got myself a nice ramp to tie that uh, hen on. And then I'm gonna get, this is a big old hen bird here. I'm gonna get the hen and I'm gonna look. <laughs> and try to find one. This is a, uh, I will tell you, this is a ginger color, a natural color. If you know, if you, it's like golden retriever uh, dog color. The, the, I've tried dark brown. I've tried uh, barred, almost like grizzly uh, brown. I don't know. All I can tell you is this is the, uh, the color that makes this, this fly really tick. And I wanna make sure that the fibers are not gonna over uh, cover the whole body. I want this to, to end well before the point of the hook. And I do the same thing. I take the feather, I put the hackle pliers on the very tip, I draw back, I always tell when I teach a class, when I teach them this, I always say, you can only draw back once <clears throat> because with hen, it's re they're real sensitive. 
If you draw back too many times, you're gonna start ripping fibers off both sides. And then I'm gonna trim that point. And I wanna trim it so that I don't have to trim it when I tie it in. I take the shiny side towards me. I put my thumb right behind where I separated the feathers. And I try to get my thread nice and flat and open, and I tie this in. And, the, and it should hold itself in place. Now, I'm going to uh, get tackle pliers. I'm going to stand this straight up. I'm going to do the same thing. Pinch it and draw it forward through my fingers. I don't want to bring my fingers back. I just want to draw the feather through my fingers. When I do that, it pulls them back gent a little bit more gently, and then I'm going to start to work it around. That's and a as handy, I- That's a handy tip that is, Scott. What? That's a handy tip that is. Oh yeah, it is, it is. Let me get this wrapped in and I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. A lot of, a lot of the, so I'm going three and I'm gonna come up into four. Heavily hackled, why? Heavily hackled because this is the part that takes the beating. Wrap it in, start from front to back. And now you got it trained nice. It's nice and it, it's in there really well. If you take the, the material and you draw it back, what happens is twofold. One is where that um, point has been tied in, you're, you put a, a lot of tension on that when you pull back because you're you're putting tension on uh, the feather right where it's tied in. At the same time, you're trying to train it back. When you hold it and pull it forward, you're still kind of holding that piece right in and you're preventing it from yanking it back. You're, yank you're kind of just drawing it forward. And there are, there are, and there's nothing wrong with it. There are people that will take it and they'll rip their scissors up the sides and they'll just force every one of these fibers to kind of crunch over, but they the fibers break a little when you do that. And and hen's not it's not really strong. You know, wood duck different story. Those wood duck fibers are in they're they're like concrete in there, but the hen ones not so much. Um, so if you draw it forward, and you could even draw it forward with. Let me take one here and show you. You could even take it and get it ready to, to tie in. Get it so it's ready to go. Take your, your fingers. I've got the hackle pliers on the bottom of the stem. Pinch your fingers and then just draw the feather through a couple times. And you can see it's it start, it's working itself in the position. It's got them trained to go over. And that's one way you could do that. Um, some people put hackle pliers on both ends and they train them and they do it that way. Um, I just do it. After you break a couple, you know what your kind of strength is and you just take it down just below the break point and do it that way, but it works great. And then you can actually take these feathers once they're in place and pinch them. And once you pinch them, look at the difference. They train right down because I didn't break the fibers. 
I just took them real easy and I, I gently worked them over. And I also, when I tied them in, I opened the thread up on this. Can you still see me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I opened the thread up. So the thread fibers are wide open. They're not corded. So like I couldn't use Vivas on this. This is a, um, a thread that I can spin counterclockwise and open them up. If you use the thread that's really corded, then it'll, it'll cut those fibers on its own. So you just want to be aware of that. And then you can do the same thing. Because this is a bigger hook, I'm not going to um, take my head cement and uh, coat the thread. I'm actually going to coat it. Once I've got the the uh, the fly tied, and if you get um, any of the get any of the um, thread uh, varnish in the. Uh, I, I'm looking for a piece that I can use here. You probably got one. Oh yeah, there we go. Just take uh, take a piece of um, of the waist of the hen, stick it the stem in the eye, and then pull pull the feather through like this. And it'll wick all of that uh, varnish out of the eye, and it and it you're already throwing that away. But it, that's a good um, that's kind of a good uh, little tip because a lot of times you'll get out there and you'll you'll go like this with your uh, bodkin a couple of times to clean that eye out. Um, but somehow you when you pull your bodkin out, it's still it's got a little bit of a coating to it or it doesn't, it's got a little ridge in it when it hardens and then you're out there and, it's, and the wind's always blowing and it's always cold and you're holding your tippet trying to get it in there going, who the hell tied this fine? You know, Don, well, it's you. And so it, it, it just makes better sense if you have it cleaned out before you, before you go. Um, so there, that's, these are two simple flies. Look at the profile on that. There's nothing to it when it gets wet. You can see what the fish is looking at underneath. You can see that you get that barring from that teal and then the olive on top. And it's it's really, really uh, an effective fly. This Do you have hex, hexagenia over there, uh, mayflies that hatch, big ones? Well, the yellow Sally. Okay, so the Sally's are small. These ones we have here are big. They're 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 close to Sally's, but they're they're actually bigger. And they're usually um they they're a night, they release at night. Um and this is a good emerger for a hexagenie. And uh it's a great, it's a great hex pattern. We get those hex hatches <clears throat> where um the ponds or the areas that we're fishing in have a real muddy bottom. Um, they'll get, we'll get hexes and green drakes. And uh, they're only, they only kind of hatch in the late of late day. And um, if they're not taking them off the surface, this would be the fly, one of the flies that would work um, to use. So, so there's two uh, simple patterns, uh, sprite, uh, sprite hooks. What your materials you got hanging around? Um, you know, if you wanted to use chenille uh, for the body, you could use chenille. Um, I like the wool only because I, I think the wool gives it a richer color in the water, uh, and the chenille gives it a little bit more of a of a less natural color in the water. A lot of times when we use chenille here, 
on a on a body of a, a, a small fly. We'll rib it with something like a uh, real thin mylar. And uh, it takes a little bit of the edge of it looking like it's almost like a, a tube. This is a little more natural. And as the fish starts to hit this and um, you catch a bunch, you're gonna find that that wool starts to have a uh, little bit of fibers around that come out, which is great um, because it gives it a more natural look to the body and a little less of a, uh, of a you know, kind of a, I don't want to use the word plastic, but you know, it's, it's, it's more natural is what it is. And uh, again, great fly, uh, easy to tie, you know, uh, you could do a half a dozen to a dozen of these in, you know, uh, 45 minutes. And, but it, these produce fish over and over and over. You, you know, there are other patterns that um, imitate these same uh, insects, but if you, if you said, Scott, you can only take a couple flies, those two would definitely be flies that I'd be fishing with. And I find that they work all year round for us. Um, they're, they're not just limited to a certain time of the year. They, they, they will work all year long and, uh, and, and the fish will come up and hit them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's worth trying and having a couple in your box. So, and does anybody have any questions? Deathly silence. That's okay. Come on, That's guys. Okay. No? Okay. So simple patterns, right? Um, easy to tie. I sent uh, Derek the recipes. If you have a question on them or anything, uh, I um, you can send me an email or uh, WhatsApp app. I'll uh, respond back to you with whatever information you're looking for. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll volunteer again to come and do a big streamer again. Um, get you ready and hopefully uh, everything will work out. And I'll be over there at the BFFI this year. And, uh, and uh, you know, if you're around, I'd uh, love to meet you. And uh, we'll be there for a little bit. I don't know where, I'll have to look at a map. But if you guys have a, a night where you're doing a, a fly tying around that and I'm there, uh, and and I can get to that to your area. I'll I'll slide over and uh, you know do one in person for you. So uh, just keep. It. We'll talk before that, anyways. But if you want me to do another uh, streamer for you in the in the fall, perfect. Anytime. Magic. Thank well, you, Scott. I'm sure uh, the uh, pottery fly ties would like you to give them a demo. Sure. Well, we'll get. Well, as we get close, um, I'll get my. I'm I'm gonna bring my wife, so she she's the uh, travel agent, so she'll uh, get, she'll book the tickets and she'll get all that stuff. So once I know when I'm gonna be, you know, how many days before and after, give me a, sh I'll give you, I'll send it to Derek and he can get it out to everyone and we can go from there. Um, but I'm more than happy to help out. Uh, you know, I'm over there. You know, put me to work. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Excellent. Really? Cool. You guys Thank have you. a great evening. Um, thanks again for having me. These are great. I have people who, you. I, I don't know if you realize this, Derek, but there are a lot of people over here. They don't watch these live, but they go back to the YouTube channel and watch these. And I get emails from them. And they're like, oh, that was great. You know, um, so they, because it's the middle of the day for us, they don't, they don't always register. And but they go back and watch it, and um, it's it's great. It's a great, you know. You should know that they're uh, definitely uh, uh, liking that. So sure. it's it's kept everybody together and kept people interested, isn't it? Yeah, we're just at t t uh, Saturday, and I and I think it'll be seven thirty your time. But I think the American Fly Fishing Museum Facebook page. I'm going to do a a live presentation for them. But I'm gonna, we're gonna be over there in Vermont, and um, it's the first time we've done something similar to this. Uh, in this will be, it'll be three years since we did the last one. So we're hoping we're going over the the edge here and uh, and get more stuff. Uh, so uh, in person because it's 
this, these things have been great. They've kept everyone together, but everyone likes to, you know, to be there and tie with you and whatever it is. So, all right. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Okay. You guys all have a great Thanks, time. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Let's go. Cheers, Scott. Cheers, Derek. Bye-bye. Cheers, Scott. Thanks. Thanks, Scott.